bring in former governor Mike Huckabee. Governor Huck, we know about this story. Um, your monologue on that show was quite impressive. Um, you brought it out. What's, what's shocking is no one else is talking about it. Governor, tell us why that's happening. Eric, it's beyond me as to why this isn't one of the most talked about news stories in America. Uh, this is a very prominent individual, manager of the Little Rock Airport, um, gun collector. Was there something that he was doing that was uh, criminal? We don't know. He was never charged with it. He was uh, being served with a search warrant, but it's 6 a.m., and they break his door down while he's sleeping and uh, proceed to shoot him in the head and kill him. So Mike, There's something here that we need to know. Yeah, and no. and I, I think the big question, Eric, is uh, why didn't they just pull him over when he was backing out of his driveway? Or, heck, they could have gone to his office at the airport. It's a gun-free zone. There wouldn't have been a shootout there, most likely. Uh, but there, there are no questions being answered by the ATF right now. My former chief legal counsel and then later U.S. attorney Bud Cummins is representing the family, so I'm in touch with them uh, as much as I can be, not the family, but with the attorney. And it's just bizarre. And thank you, Eric. You're one of the few people in the country that's giving attention to this. Well, you are. You brought it out. And, and I want to get to, to Ted Nugent talking about what, you know, you, what the job you're doing with it. But, but so, Mike, no charges, right? No charges. They got a, a warrant yeah. looking for evidence to, yep. to, to, to maybe create a charge. But what? no charge. And they use lethal force. Now, Mike, were these just overzealous ATF agents? Or is this part of the culture? I, we don't know. And uh, that's one of the things that's disturbing. Once they carried out this shooting, they have answered no questions. Eric, one of the things they are required to do is have body-worn cameras. We don't know if they had them. If they did have them, then release the footage. And if they didn't have them, then they have a lot of explaining to do as to why they didn't. Right now, the only video that most of us have seen has been the video from uh, Mr. Malinowski's ring camera on his doorbell that they hurriedly went and covered up, and then some video from his neighbor where you can see the 10 police cars coming in just before 6 a.m. to conduct the raid. We don't know, did they try to give him any warning? How much time between the time, if they did give him warning, uh, before they broke down his door, because there is some protocol here that federal agents, first of all, they're not supposed to do these no-knock raids anymore unless right. there's imminent danger, a hostage being held, uh, imminent threat of death to someone. None of that was present. I've read the affidavit. I've read the search warrant. Uh, they wanted to search to see what weapons and firearms he may have had at his home. They had some questions. Okay, but this is a process crime. At this point, it is a paperwork crime, and even if he was guilty of the worst thing they thought he might be guilty of, it basically is a typical probation, and it certainly doesn't warrant that kind no, of so no charges, uh, draconian no, no, raid on no his home. No charges, even if he was charged for what the things, the things that they got the warrant for, they had to present a judge with whatever evidence they had, whatever that was, was it wouldn't even raise to the level, certainly not of lethal force. So, Mike, tell me, there were shots fired, right? The, 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 the guy, the, yes. the, um, the, the deceased, fired a shot because someone was breaking in his door. I assume he felt someone was breaking in. He had his wife there. Is that about right? But he didn't try and kill him. He shot into the ground, didn't he? He shot at their feet. Both he and his wife were awakened by the sound of their door crashing in. He got up, grabbed his pistol, loaded the magazine, went into the hallway, and he saw figures in the darkness. He didn't know who they were. Uh, she does not recall that they announced who they were. The unfortunate thing, Eric, she was just a couple of steps behind him, and when they shot him, uh, parts of him and blood splattered all over her, after he was shot, they took her in her thin nightgown. Keep in mind, they were both asleep when this happened. Took her in her thin nightgown, would not let her get additional clothing, wouldn't let her go to the neighbors to get additional clothing, and made her sit in a police car for several hours without even so much as the courtesy of being able to go to the bathroom. 
explain why that was an appropriate way to treat a person whose husband had just been shot in the head and she's sitting there uh, with his blood all over her. I can't. I can't. Now, the media doesn't, hasn't picked it up, Mike, and, and I'm wondering, and I don't want to make this, a, I don't want to be cheap about this or overly, I don't, I just want to be by, if this were a minority, an African-American couple, and he gets shot and killed there, I, I'm mm -hmm. guessing it would be splashed all over mainstream media, wouldn't it? Well, it was when it was Breonna uh, Taylor. It was when it was George Floyd. Uh, you know, we were all concerned. Okay, explain. Why are we going through these kind of extraordinary means to serve a search warrant, for heaven's sakes, at 6 o'clock in the morning, breaking someone's door down? I mean, if, if it was necessary for it to escalate to that level, then I think the ATF that very day should start explaining why it had escalated to that level. What was the reason behind needing to do that kind of mm. search warrant when he has yet to be charged with a crime? Yeah, Mike, we're going to leave it with this. I want to show Ted Nugent on the show the other night. Give me a little bit of props. They're liars. They're untrustworthy. And thank God, Eric, you're spotlighting these people because they're horrible, horrible, dishonest Listen, people. Good to have you on, my friend Ted Nugent. Again, folks, Patriot right there. Really, really looking forward to talking to you again soon, Ted. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Eric. And thanks, Mike Huckabee, huh? Uh, absolutely. We love Huck here. And he started that whole conversation giving you credit for 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 exposing this and, and we'll, we'll stay with it Mike. final thought and, and thank you for doing what you're doing well i i just appreciate eric you're giving attention because uh, somebody needs to answer for this if there are explanations that would explain it then give them to us but as a public we have a right to know because if it can happen to this gentleman it can happen to any of us who might own a firearm or even someone who doesn't. Yeah, and it, again, it, what gets me is the guy is experienced with firearms. He has a handgun in his in his hand, in his possession. People breaking into he could have shot those people. He clearly didn't, yeah. and then he lost his life for that. Mike, really good, we'll stay on it with you. If you got more, if you got some breaking stuff, bring it to us, please. We sure will, Eric, thank you very much.